seconds remaining in his minor for a high sticking. Nolan also has a minor for high sticking, so let's say there's 10 seconds left in that, but he also got a boarding penalty. So the 67s will go to a power play, barring any goals here in the next 10 seconds. The Royals mark DeSantis to Slaney, back to DeSantis. As now the 67s are on a power play. Sagan's pass, now to Benny. Benny across the line, fires one. It was deflected by Slaney, and Slaney gets control of it, fires it into the 67's bench. 142 in the penalty to Owen Nolan. Well, a good crowd here in attendance tonight, Wayne. Uh, probably up or probably 18, 1900 fans here, and uh, certainly anyone who, who's not here is missing one heck of a game. The next chance to catch the Cornwall Royals live will be against the London Knights Sunday afternoon. Game time there will be two o'clock. Ottawa on the power play. This is Chris Snell. Rink wide for Simon, who deflected it in. Pasma backhands one out over the glass, and uh, that knocks some seconds off the clock. Seven minutes, 40 seconds left to go in the third period. We don't dare say the game, because if, of course, there is a tie, we will have that five-minute overtime period. Well. Ottawa drawing a penalty here, I believe, Wayne. Well, for the life of me, I don't know why, but Miller has definitely motioned for somebody to go to the penalty box, and it is going to be an Ottawa 67. Now Greg Walters comes off the bench and wants to know why. Well, Kilray is furious. Well, I think Kilray is gone. So that's what it must have been. Kilray has been ejected from the hockey game. And picked up a bench penalty as well. Assistant coach Bert O'Brien will continue, I guess, as you get a good look there. And Brian Kilray, ever since those penalties were called, he has not been a happy guy. So he will go to his dressing room, I guess. And watch the game from the exit area. Now Jackson on the far side for John Slaney, who tries to find Cerrone through the middle. That's deflected in. Durian clears it off the boards. For 18, Chris Simon fires a long, high, hard one. That's off the glass. The Royals control. DeSantis. Mark DeSantis out across the line. He dumps one into Ottawa territory. Simon, that gets by him. Now Snell gives it to Simon. Skating four aside here. Simon, good move across the line. He'll fire a long one. Daryl Paquette gets the glove on that. Leaves it for Slaney for Jackson. Mike Jackson. Taken out of the play nicely there by number 19, Riccardi. Now Simon leaves it for Walters. Walters are ever dangerous across the line, but DeSantis stands him up. John Slaney turning for Cornwall. Slaney, good move, moving right in. Oh, and he just got it up too high. And up over the glass it goes, but what a move by John Slaney. Having an outstanding game in that shot. Wayne, they certainly don't know what to do with John Slaney when he comes down. They don't know whether he's gonna let that quick shot go. And just in tight, made it just a super move around the defensive there, got a shot, but of course he was going upstairs with it, but just a little too much upstairs. What a smoothie he is, as that is not Brian Kilray. That gentleman is Bert O'Brien, assistant coach of the 67s. He'll be carrying the club the rest of the way. Brian Kilray ejected from the hockey game. 49 seconds remain in the Ottawa penalty, 17 to Nolan's penalty, so the Royals will have a quick power play in any case. J.A. Schneider now. His pass to Knesserich, to Levesque. Levesque is stood up by John East. Now a rink-wide pass, that's broken up by Ribble. 
Nolan belted number five, Gibson. Here's Nolan, his centering pass right in front was deflected away. Gibson trying to hobble to the bench. In the meantime, number 16, Sangster put the clutch on one of the Royals players. I couldn't catch who it was. And right in front of the Ottawa bench, there's a bit of a pileup. Looks to be Schneider at yes. the bottom of everything. Yes, it is. There you see him. Five fifty-three to go in the third period. The Royals are now on a thirteen second power play. Royals three, Ottawa two. If you've just joined us, the Royals got two goals in the first period. Opened up a two nothing lead. That's how it finished after one. And then the 67s came back in a defensive style, got a couple of breaks and scored two goals of their own. Second period finished two all. And the Royals on a beautiful goal by John Slaney lead right now 3-2. Slaney fires one rink when Nolan, Nolan throwing his weight around tonight took out Riccardi. Number 11 is Poirier getting back at Nolan. Now everyone's in there. And I've seen Owen Nolan play it tough, but tonight he's really throwing his weight around. Well, maybe a few extra scouts in the crowd, Wayne, because I haven't seen Nolan play this kind of hockey in a while. Wow. He, he usually picks his hits, but boy, he's hitting everybody in sight. And he looks like he's going to send a couple players off here. I wonder if Nolan will go again, Wayne. Now, that's Poirier doing some pushing and shoving there. And I don't think Owen Nolan will have any problem sleeping this evening. <laughs> Nolan and Cerrone both going to the box. McTamney and Poirier going to the box. And one more time, we'll have to see how the penalties fall and what kind of man player advantage there will be, if any. Mark Crawford talking it up with his guys, trying to hang on to that one goal lead and defeat these Ottawa 67s before they play host to the London Knights on Sunday afternoon. That will be a two o'clock start. Of course, Wayne, with uh, a little over five minutes uh, left in the game, you certainly don't want Owen Nolan to spend too much time in the penalty box right now. That's a good point especially in a 3-2 hockey game. And he picks up four minutes, Wayne. Double minor again. Okay, so that'll just about do him for the game, in essence. Nolan, four minutes gathered on that exchange, and it uh, looks like Jason Cerrone getting a minor penalty as well. So far, McTamney, two minutes on the other side two minutes for number 11, Poirier. So again, Owen Nolan will get the extra minor here. Well, a very, uh, very dangerous situation here. Man power wise, Wayne, we're gonna play uh, by the looks of it, three against three here for two minutes. There's lots of ice out there. And with Cerrone and Nolan in the box for Cornwall, those would be the two guys that would be out there if you were playing a three-on-three. Three. So Mark Crawford, this time round, has to send out Slaney, Jackson, and Mark DeSantis. The Ottawa 67s have Snell, who is ever so solid back there. Ambrosiak. And looks to be Jeff Riccardi as well, number 19. So we'll have to wait and see what happens here. Of course, Cornwall missing uh, Paul Kane, who would also be out here in the situation. Right, Paul Kane separated shoulder. His status is yet unknown as to whether he will re be returning this year or not. Ambrosiak in the corner. He's taken out there. Jackson sets out for Cornwall against Snell. Jackson going to the backhand. Snell pokes it away from him. Jackson centers it out, though, but Ambrosiak takes control. Now Ambrosiak on the left wing. 
he loses the puck. Slaney for Jackson. Here's a chance for Slaney and Jackson. Jackson has the puck. Will he fire one? He gives it to Slaney. He scores! Don Slaney! Oh, puts the Royals up by two. Listen to that crowd. One more time, John Slaney puts it up high, Joe. Exactly, and that's where he goes all the time when he's up tight, Wayne, and uh, what can we say, just a beautiful play. Here's your replay with Jackson feeding Slaney up high, it goes. And the Royals regain that two-goal lead that they had at the end of one period of play, but lost in the second. They have it back now. Court ball four, Ottawa two. Wayne also, uh, Ambrosiak, number 12, picked up a penalty there, Wayne. All right, so that doesn't have an effect right now, but it will in about a minute and 15 seconds time as John East scoots out across the line, and he goes on the backhand, stops and circles. Nowhere to go, really. Dumps it in for number 25. That's Greg Clancy. He's tied up nicely by Ribble. The puck is there, but the whistle's not blown. Now, Rod Pasma for Cornwall gives it back to Jerry Ribble. Ribble right out in front for Pasma. The big guy is his second goal of the year tonight in the first period. He got that. Taken care of there, though, as the Ottawa 67's Clancy now going end to end. Working his way in there nicely against Bell and Ribble. Ribble takes him out eventually, though. Now on this side, there's a shot by Kuabera. That's a weak one and way wide. Bell will try to move that out, but cannot. Here's a pass for Binney out in front. He couldn't gather that in. Ribble is down. Now Binney out in front. They score! Kuabera. That comes about with Jerry Ribble down and out of the play. And Mark Crawford, I guess, not excited about this one as uh, one of the trainers is out there now. But with 3.55 to go in the third period, the Ottawa 67s are not out of this yet. Here you see on the replay, Bell couldn't get it out. And we'll see if Ribble, where he gets hurt here somewhere, right there. And then out in front they came. And there's a shot by Kuabera. And it's a 4-3 hockey game. Ribble now getting to his knees and up he is. And he'll go to the bench and hopefully that's not a serious injury to Jerry Ribble who has been playing extremely well in the last four or five games for the Cornwall Royals, blocking tons of shots in front. Well, as you mentioned, Wayne, this game certainly far from being over here. Yes, sir. Jeff Reed, Slaney, and DeSantis for Cornwall. Riccardi, Walters, and Kuabara for the 67s as we're skating three players aside. Slaney circling, has some skating room. Hits the brakes as he crosses the line, dumps one in. Reed will try and catch up to that. Kuabara takes him out of the play. The fans want a penalty there, but no. Now Mark DeSantis tried to regain control there as there's two pucks on the ice. One of the fans must have thrown one out there. So the referee blows the whistle on that. And some of those penalties have expired. And I hope the fans realize that they could only hurt the Cornwall Royals if they get caught doing something like that. That's Someone could have been seriously hurt the, had they stepped in that puck. Well, it's not right. There's no doubt about that. Now, the 67s on a power play. Now, 
Now the goal judge wants one of the linesmen at the other end, perhaps to clear some debris from the ice. They're in discussion now at the other end, out of your screen. 334 remains in the third period. Wayne Thompson here along with Gilles Gibo and the Ottawa 67s will have a power play for 154. The Royals hanging on to that one goal lead. Yes, they're checking the glass area down in that end behind the Ottawa goal, but everything seems to check out okay. On this power play for Ottawa, Chris Simon, Walters, and Sagan, along with Snell and Riccardi. The Royals mark DeSantis, number four, clears it. Cerrone and Jackson out there, along with Slaney, as well as DeSantis, to try and kill this power play off. Jackson out there now. Slaney intercepts the pass. He's got a golden opportunity. Moving right in. Feeds Jackson. Oh, and Jackson couldn't get good wood on a wiggly puck. 67's come right back with DeSantis, turns it around and sends it all the way down. But what a golden opportunity as Slaney and Jackson moved in. Jackson moving it all the way down one more time as the Royals continue their penalty killing trend in very solid fashion. Bell is out there now with Jolie. Here's number 25, that's Greg Clancy across the line. J.A. Schneider trying to get a hold of him and does. Bell moves in to help out. The Royals trying to get a whistle, they cannot however as the 67s move it out. Royals try to clear the zone, but cannot. Now they have it in the corner. They move into the position to, to move it in, and Snell's shot is wide. And Ron Jolly gains control and sends it the length of the ice. 20 seconds remain in that Nolan penalty. Here's Snell for Ottawa. Snell's rink-wide pass is gathered in. Now Clancy overskates that. And Bell finds an opening and sends it the length of the ice, and Bell was belted by Jeff Riccardi. Here's Sangster. Sangster across the line. Moving right into the back end to the front. They shoot. Oh! Daryl Paquette had to be sharp. DeSantis was belted on the play, and bodies flying again as Nolan's out of the penalty box. Cerrone trying to center it for Cornwall. Nolan has it, but he's checked well. 67's move it out, but not over the line as Mark DeSantis dumps it right back in. Cerrone tried to find Nolan in front, cannot. 67's work it free, there's John East. John East out here for Greg Walters. Walters leaves it for Riccardi, back to Walters, that's too far for him. Knesserich sends it back out to the center ice area. Now less than one minute to go in this the third period. Here's Walters moving in, checked by Nolan. John Slaney finds an opening and sends it all the way down. This could be an icing call. It is. As number two, John East, back to touch that. 46 seconds to go in the third period, and I believe a timeout has been called. And Jill, what a hockey game. Oh, what a hockey game, Wayne. Certainly, we've, uh, we haven't seen an exciting game like this for quite a while, Wayne. Of course, uh, Slaney not realizing that he had a lot of time to handle that puck and uh, not, not to force the face off in this end. And it's exactly what Ottawa was looking for. Of course, 46 seconds left. They're going to leave the goaltender in wing. Find that hard to believe with the face off down here. I would too. A situation came up a while ago last week that, that we were talking about this. And uh, whatever we say, the coaches don't seem to want to do. So we'll just see what happens. <laughs> yeah. But I know I would definitely pull the goaltender. 4-3 Cornwall, 46 seconds to go in the third period. Mark Crawford giving his guys instructions as to what he wants done in his own zone. Now you get a good look at Walters, Vinny, Seguin. Number 19 is Jeff Riccardi. They'll probably all be out there for the Ottawa 67s to try and get the equalizer here. Chris Snell as well. Andrew Brody has not returned uh, to the hockey game. He was out uh, early in the first period, basically, and has not returned. So 
We hope there's nothing seriously wrong with him. Well, Cornwall will have to play their finest 46 seconds of this game, Wade, because Ottawa, as we know, is, uh, can really move the puck around. They have moved the puck around very well tonight, especially in Cornwall's end, but uh, Paquette coming up big any time that they had a decent shot on net. All right, Jill, George Durian is out of the net. And the 67s have the extra attacker. Cerrone wins the faceoff, gives it to Jackson. Jackson overskated it. Cerrone couldn't clear. Snell keeps it in. Now there's a chance. It goes the length of the ice. Slaney's shot does, but it's too, too wide. And that'll be an icing call. Cerrone definitely complaining on that, that saying that uh, he got there before the Ottawa 67 player did. But well, it went right through the Ottawa 67 player's leg point. I don't even think he cuts that the way through. It's hard to see. I don't know if we can get a replay of that or not, or whether we even have time, but the call has been made and a face-off to the left of Daryl Paquette. That did wear some time off the clock, 34 seconds to go. As the Royals want to make one change, Nolan goes out there now with Cerrone, Mark DeSantis, and John Slaney. Jackson out there as well. The Royals gain control. Slaney fires it off the boards. Jackson bangs at it. It goes all the way down. Nolan will make chase here. Nolan going up against tough guy Sangster. That killed an extra couple of seconds as now Sangster and Nolan have a look at each other. And Sangster throws a punch there. Nolan might have suckered him into a penalty. I believe he did. Oh, no. Nolan's going to go too now. No need for that at all. And Nolan's upset about that because... He really didn't do anything. No. This all comes about with 23 seconds to go in the third period. Jason Cerrone arguing that, hey, we didn't do anything about that. Miller making the call in any case. And Sangster and Nolan go to their respective penalty bench areas much to the displeasure of this 1,800-plus crowd at the Cornwall Civic Complex. Here you see some of the action in the replay. There's the punch, and Sangster took it Nolan. And you hear the crowd not pleased with the call that was made by referee Miller. Brian Kilray, who has been ejected from the game, is now behind the Ottawa bench, and I don't know if that's allowed well, or not. Well, I well I can't understand that. If he was ejected from the game. What's he doing in behind the bench? What's he back? I think maybe he just got fed up with some of the calls and, and went himself to the uh, dressing room, Wayne. Maybe he did. Maybe he just said, i got to get out of here before I, before I do get ejected. Maybe he did just take it upon himself earlier to leave for a while, but now he's back. It has been definitely a heated battle if you've just joined us. 23 seconds to go in the hockey game. 4-3 well, for Cornwall. I'll tell you, Wayne Sangster is just incensed in that penalty box. He was yelling at the crowd, and uh, the assistant coach uh, for Ottawa went over and told him to sit down. Okay, off the faceoff. Jackson tries to clear it off the board. Snell hems that in, though. His pass is intercepted by DeSantis. DeSantis off the glass. That'll go all the way down. Cerrone could get there first. He does not. The Ottawa player touches the puck, but boy, did he ever pay for it. Cerrone belted Snell, and now just nine seconds remain on that clock. Wayne, and we're going to have to keep a close eye at the end of this buzzer because I'll tell you, the boys in the penalty box are still talking to each other, so. Yes, they are. We may see a very rough nine seconds here on the clock, Wayne. And a big two points for both teams here, Wayne. It really is. The Ottawa 67s really wanted this hockey game. Only two points back of front-running Kingston, tied with Belleville, with a game in hand on the Kingston front knack. The Royals wanted this hockey game. Uh, however, if the Royals can kill off the next nine seconds without an Ottawa goal, the Royals will win this hockey game. Nolan and Rob Sangster 
still having verbal discussion in the penalty box area. And we will definitely keep an eye on those two as this game winds down. Face off to the right of Daryl Paquette. Nine seconds to go. 67s win the face off. Snell falls as he fires one. That went way wide. Jackson off the board. Two seconds, one second. And the Cornwall Royals will win this one. The final score, four to three. Nolan and Sangster will keep an eye on them. They're pointing sticks at each other. And now both teams converge just in front of the penalty box area. I don't think anything will devolve. Now Nolan and Sangster, they want to go at it. Here they go, Nolan and Sangster. The referees get involved in the middle, however. And perhaps maybe a good thing. Frontenac just simply dumping right back in. John Slaney turning, cannot clear the zone. Kept in there by Kavanaugh. Into the corner, number 11, Yop. In behind the net, centering pass in front. He oh. scores! Morrison and Paquette had a whack at it and fanned on the clear and Morrison just hopped right on that opportunity and it's a 3-1 hockey game and how things can go your way or not <laughs> as you were referring to Todd. That's right uh, Morrison just there and just kept whacking at the puck as you'll see on the replay there. just bang. Yeah there's where Paquette tried to clear and fanned on it just banged the puck at the right time Tony Cimarello with uh, Cimarello with a beautiful opportunity about 10 feet out from the net just blasted it. And when you're that close and blast a shot like that, it either goes by the net or through the goalie. He went by the net. <laughs> <laughs> Old Bobby Hull play didn't miss by much. <laughs> so 3:04 now, left in the first period. Three to one, Kingston in the lead. As they're called on the icing play there. As you get a good look at Jerry Ribble, who in my eyes has been just a, a great asset to this uh, Cornwall Hockey Club. He's arrived here now about uh, seven or eight weeks, and uh, the way he blocks shots, and uh, nothing fancy, but boy, does he get the job done back home. Here he is off the face off, a shot right on. Wilson kicked that aside. Pasman now can't clear. McKillop steps in across the line, but that's called on the offside as Yob, I guess, had a step there. A few of the Kingston Frontenac players not liking the call by Monroe. Especially Nelson, who's sitting <laughs> right on the blue line area. Well, too bad it's not negotiable. <laughs> he doesn't make a career of hockey. Perhaps he'd get into refereeing. There's a shot by number 15 Morrison that caromed off into the corner he thought he had it behind the net but now he doesn't it's cleared but not out over the line and that'll go out over the end glass as uh, the puck was on end and just 239 remains as you get a good look at Daryl Paquette cannot be faulted on the first two goals but Fan on his clearing attempt and Morrison made it three to one I guess uh, you'd have to say you'd have to fault a goaltender on, on that well, the Royals' uh, defense playing a little sloppy in their own end. Uh, you see them trying to whack the puck out to, uh, over the blue line from behind the net. Hey, guys, you know, you've got two more periods to go. Buckle down, stick to the basics. All right, Bell now fires one out. Kingston right back in as John Slaney in behind his goal. Finds Bell on the other side to Cerrone. Cerrone couldn't hang on to that, though. Now Mark DeSantis will try. He moves it up to Cerrone and across the line. Cerrone tried to find Bell on the short side, a, a neat little pass, but that didn't click. Bell didn't read him right. Now Kingston moving their way right in, but Narchuk taken out, though. And the Royals try and dump the zone, but can't. DeSantis has some skating room. He'll fire one out. And that, again, will be called on the offside, so more offsides than we're accustomed to seeing in an OHL hockey game, that's for sure, this evening with 156 remaining here. Well, the Royals are uh, just going to be content uh, to dump the puck out. Hope for the best scoring opportunity. Cerrone with another uh, opportunity down in front of Jeff Wilson, the Frontenac's goaltender. But once again, just one too many passes and a little bit behind. Guy Levesque, Clancy, Jolly line out there one more time for Cornwall. Giesbrecht fires one in. 
Pazma has to follow that up. Now works it free to Levesque. Kingston, though, good forechecking. They're being very pesky here in this first period. Giesbrecht along the boards. Now the Royals work it free. Todd Mondor does, or uh, Ribble, rather, fires one down where Woods comes up with it. Not out, though. There's Ribble's shot right on. He has the Cornwall goal this evening. Levesque in there, along with Clancy, but Kingston works it free out across the center ice line. Giesbrecht, nice move and a good pass, but that just didn't click. They work it in behind. In the corner now. Centering pass. There's all sorts of room there. Good save by Daryl Paquette. The rebound. No shot was made. It was blocked in front by Ribble, who works it to Clancy, who was nailed by number five, Brock Woods. Heavily <laughs> coming up here. Another holding call as Jolly was making chase, and he was hauled down. And with 50 seconds to go, I believe that should be a holding penalty, Todd. <laughs> or a tripping. If it's not, it's a lassoing penalty. <laughs> well, Jolly, uh, he's quite a fast skater and uh, just unable to get the Jets on. He was tripped up before. I know what the argument down there with the referee is. I believe it was Jeff Reed that was, or was it Clancy that was nailed uh, with the Kingston sandwich there. And, yeah, I thought it was Clancy afforded, who just came out over the line. and uh, <laughs> Afforded Jolly the bit of a break. Clancy sandwich just outside the <laughs> Royals blue line and the center ice area. So on the power play, the Royals go. Number 16, Gord Harris getting the penalty call. Cerrone, Knesserich, Bell, Slaney, and Mondor. Now Mondor controlling. Right out in front, the side. Oh, oh Knesserich deflected that. Wilson making the save. Kingston, however, now finds an opening and sends it all the way down. And with 34 seconds to go in the first period, this might be the last crack at it in this period, in any case, on the power play. Slaney across the line for Knesserich. To Cerrone, back to Knesserich. He overskates it. Mondor has to circle. That'll be a two-line pass, as Bell didn't get in across the line where he should have been, perhaps. And Mondor had nowhere to go with that pass, but on the other side. Well, the Royals seem to have uh, problems making the passes click in the Kingston end. A few good scoring chances have gone the way of a bad pass. Royals, although, will entertain the thought of having a minute and 10 seconds on the power play coming out to start the second period. All right, still 16 seconds here is Reed out there with Cerrone and Bell now. Slaney trying a rink-wide pass for Bell. That's stopped at the blue line by number 12, <laughs> Similero. Now they work it in, Similero. Reed, though, stands him up and then puts him down. And just one second remains on the clock. So we'll go through the preliminaries here, drop the puck, and that will be the end of the first period. But as you mentioned, the Royals will come back with a good uh, minute and 10 seconds on that power play to start the second period, Todd, and it would be an advantage to them down 3-1 here well, in the first. Well, Kingston's playing very good hockey here. You notice when the face-off's down on the Royals' end, when they're man a man down, they forecheck right off the face-off. That burns a lot of time off that power play. They're an aggressive hockey club, and that's why they're only one point behind the Belleville Bulls at this stage <laughs> of the season. Is now there, Monroe drops it. <laughs> And I don't know, <laughs> with one second on a clock, what <laughs> Similero is figure. getting all <laughs> excited about, but he does, as Daryl Paquette and the rest of the Cornwall Royals will have to go to their dressing room and try and figure out why they're down two goals here in the first period. We'll be back with second period action. After one period of play, the Kingston Frontenacs three, the Cornwall Royals one. Todd and I will be back with second period action in just a moment. Rogers Cable 11, your community channel, is proud to bring you the matchup of the year. The best players from the OHL go head-to-head -head with the best of the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League in what's sure to be a great evening of all-star hockey. It's the Challenge Cup, and it'll be brought to you by the Parks and Recreation Department for the City of Cornwall and by Rogers Cable 11. 
Cable 11 will be broadcasting live from the Civic Complex starting at 7.30 p.m. Tuesday night, January the 30th. And don't worry if you miss it live. You can catch it the following night at 6 p.m. Or Monday night, February the 5th at 7 p.m. Or Thursday night, February 8th at 8 p.m. So watch your community channel, Cable 11, and follow the Challenge Cup live Tuesday night. Or catch the replays all brought to you by the City of Cornwall Parks and Recreation Department and Rogers Cable 11. Welcome back to the Cornwall Civic Complex. On this, the Rogers Cable 11 game of the week between the Kingston Frontenac and the Cornwall Royals, where after one period of play, the Kingston team leading the Royals by a score of 3-1. to one. And with the uh, first period scoring summary, Todd, can you update us on that, please? Well, we sure can. Uh, Jerry Ribble of the Cornwall Royals got the scoring going, and the Royals a 1-0 lead at the 10:09 mark of the first period on that low-rising deflected wrist shot uh, from the blue line. And then after that, it was all Kingston. Uh, as the Fontenacs popped in three goals, Wayne, in the span of two minutes and eight seconds. Wayne Doucette popping one in at 14.41. Then John, uh, John Nelson uh, getting one at 15.04. And Justin Morrison getting the third marker for the Frontenacs at 16.49. So three very quick goals for Kingston to give them a 3-1 edge over the Royals. All right, it seemed that the Royals uh, were in control a little bit between the five-minute mark and about the 11-minute mark of the first period. However, in that two-minute and eight-second span, after the Jerry Ribble goal, the front knack got three, and that's where we stand now. Three to one, Kingston over Cornwall as the Royals try and move it in. Cerrone now in the corner up against Liptrot. Liptrot taking him out of the play. Now Cerrone in behind looking for someone to pass it off to. Now moves it in for Knesserich as the Royals are on the power play. Mondor fans on the centering pass. And Kingston's number 23, Wayne Doucette, who has a goal in this game, fires one down where Royals' John Slaney, his pass too far for Mondor and Bell. And Kingston bounces one off the boards and back in where John Slaney turns. Slaney for Cerrone will be called as the puck was deflected up high and Cerrone didn't break stride in over the line he went. So just 45 seconds have gone by in the second period. Number 16, Gord Harris sitting out uh, the remainder of his penalty from the first period. 25 seconds there, so the Royals on the power play for the next 25 seconds. Well, you'll see Cerrone carry the puck around the back of that net. He loves to come around there wide, and the whole thing is he comes down the wing, Mondor pinches in, and Cerrone tries to center the puck. Got it that time, and Mondor fa fanned on the pass. But that play creating lots of uh, good opportunities for the Royals. All right, Jerry Ribble now circling for Cornwall, moves it on the other side. Knesserich, he's tied up by McKillop. Bell follows up for Cornwall and brings it in, but number 88, Major, tries to clear. Could not, but Kingston does, and down the ice it goes. Just two seconds now to go in that penalty. Oh, Back in full strength as Slaney overskates the puck. McKillop moving in. Slaney hits him. McKillop comes off the boards with it, though, out in front. And the Royals finally work it free. That's Darren Bell to Knesserick. Across the line. Knesserick avoiding the check momentarily. Now into the corner. Major on the boards, his centering pass. Gobbled up by Mondor, weak wrist shot is wide. Brocklehurst on Stewart, he hits him. Stewart though works it to McKillop. Now McKillop dumps it on the boards for Major. Major has a whack at it, cannot clear the zone. Reed shot in front. Royals controlling Reed on the backhand. Just missed on the far side. As number 21, Liptrot now clears the zone. Mondor fires it back in. And Wilson will stop that in behind the goal. Oh, hey. Now bodies flying as Reed was upset. In behind the play was out of your view on the TV screen, but Jeff Reed was uh, hauled down there and uh, maybe should have been a penalty to the Kingston team, but that well, will not be the case. Dave Stewart uh, was decked by Jeff Reed with a nice little hip check. And Reed, while he was down on his back, gave, uh, or uh, Stewart, while he was down on his back, gave Reed a nice crack over the top of the helmet with the blade of his stick and then a 
crack across the back of the legs as Reed was skating away, of course, all behind the back of the referee. So no penalties called. Guy Levesque off the face off. His shot is wide. Jolly and Clancy making chase in behind. On the other side it goes. Kingston cannot penetrate the Royal zone. Clancy moves it for Jolly. Jolly taken out there by Woods. Clancy now puts the body. Oh, oh here comes Wilson <laughs> out of the goal oh. crease to take on Clancy for belting Yob. <laughs> and they're going at it. There now number go. 20 is Jamie Allen. Against Jolly. Allen's got the upper hand on Jolly as Clancy and Wilson now are separated. <laughs> And isn't that unusual? Wilson now, looks a little bit peeved at something. Now Yob <laughs> and DeSantis are eyeing each other, and they might go. There they are. That still might develop. Who knows? Huh. Interesting. Not often that you see a goaltender go from his crease, Todd, and uh, <laughs> into the corner even. Well, Ron Hextall, maybe. Clancy nailed uh, uh, Tony Yob, and uh, Jeff Wilson took exception to it and went out after Clancy. We're going to have a, a replay here. Okay, that's when they don't play now here. You'll see Clancy come in right here. And put a body check on. And down he goes. And now here's Wilson coming in <laughs> after Clancy. And away they go. I don't know what's going on because when you see when we've seen the replay, uh, Jeff Wilson was looking the other direction. He didn't even see the hit. So he's ticked at something. And... Uh, this should be interesting as the fans are pretty vocal here. As they always are. Well, as Brian Kilray walking <laughs> away last week said, I just took a walk and I wanted to see the fans because they love me. <laughs> well, a bit of a free for all. Juan Jolly in the box. I can't see the. Well, I would have Kingston to think player. that Todd that Wilson would have to get the instigator penalty on sure. that. So, to my eyes, Jamie Allen is in the box. The Royals would get the upper hand on this, I would think. For Kingston. There's Wilson now complaining about something. Oh, he's got an equipment problem. Broke his suspenders. <laughs> All right, so 17-21 to go in the second period. 3-1 to one Kingston as you get a good look at Wilson, who... Had the run at uh, Chris Clancy in the corner after Clancy <laughs> put the body to Tony Yob. Now the fans getting on, uh, some of the fans up here by the broadcast booth getting on the Kingston Frontenac players as you see them turned around smiling. Boy, I don't know what got under Jeff Wilson's craw, but boy, he took exception to Clancy and he didn't even, didn't even look like he seen the hit. Still no <laughs> penalties up on the board. As we await that, again, I repeat that I would think that uh, the Kingston squad, because Wilson had the run and started that fight without question, the Royals would get the advantage to the penalty penalties, rather, that will be handed down here, but nothing's gone on the board as yet. Well, uh, number 11, Tony Yob, he went down uh, like a sack of potatoes after Clancy hit him. And then after Wilson come out and started duking with Clancy, Yob got up and, uh, and went in the scrimmage. By then, Jolly and Jamie Allen had paired off and were mixing it up quite well. Those are the only two uh, gentlemen in the box that I see down there. Jamie Allen for the front match and Ron Jolly for the Cornwall Royals. Obviously, the door is still open. <laughs> Wilson's gone. <laughs> well, as Wilson leaves to a standing ovation. <laughs> All right, so Jolly's gone. gone, and Jolly's gone as well. Looks as though the Royals will have that extra two minutes I was speaking of as Wilson has been terminated from the hockey game and he's upset. 
So Jamie Allen, I believe, gets a game misconduct. Correct. Jeff Wilson gets a game misconduct. Correct. Also, Wilson gets two minutes for, I guess it would be roughing or instigating. Right. Jolly's history, he's gone. Mm -hmm. And uh, number 23, Chris Clancy getting five minutes for fighting. So quite a turn of events here. And only, what, two minutes and 39 seconds gone. All right, Cerrone <laughs> back and forth between the penalty box area and the Cornwall Royals bench, trying to make sure that he has just clear as to the man play advantage that the Royals will have and when it will come about, because it looks as though they might be skating three on three for uh, a little while. <laughs> Well, uh, when the penalties were announced and Jeff Wilson got his game misconduct, the roars went up from the crowd, and uh, Jeff Wilson uh, obligingly took his bows and exited. The fans uh, behind that Kingston bench, as usual for any Royals game, uh, one of the more vocal areas of the rink. Yes, it is. <laughs> Goaltender for the London Knights after Sunday's game saying that, uh, geez, if uh, I ever come here again, it'll be too soon. <laughs> Saying that he just doesn't like to play here. Meanwhile, uh, he was uh, very instrumental, only you know blocking 28 uh, shots in that victory. But uh, some of those shots were quality shots that the Royals could have capitalized on and won the hockey game. But uh, good goaltending by the London Knights this past Sunday. Well, it's intimidating to be down there on the ice uh, when you, the crowd is so far up there, uh, about 12 feet above you. And, you're sort of at their mercy, and you can hear everything. Oh, yes. <laughs> Something about this rink that you can hear everything. They can probably hear us down there, Wayne. <laughs> There's uh, the referee, Houston. Houston, as he's been known to be called. Talking over the penalties with Larry Mavity. Boy, quite an assortment of penalties, and I don't know what got under the car. On the replay, uh, as we've seen it, uh, when Clancy hits uh, Tony Yob, Wilson was at the corner on, on the right-hand side of the net looking to his right side. And, uh, right Tony the other way. Yeah, I don't even think he's seen the hit. Somehow he found himself in the corner, and uh, there you go. Well, so he had a broken suspender strap. Maybe he thought Clancy broke it. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's a, boy, he rushed out of there like Ben Johnson uh, out of the starting blocks and just went to town. All right, so Jeff Wilson ejected from this hockey game. Sean Gauthier, who is being warmed up now, will go the distance for the Kingston Frontenacs as Wilson, as I mentioned earlier, gone from this game. And this might be a turning point for the Cornwall Royals who have not been themselves so far in this hockey game. Well, one of the reasons the Royals are down 3-1 to one, uh, is the goaltending by Jeff Wilson. He came up big a couple of times on Cerrone. And uh, this could be, like, as you said, the turning point uh, Sean Gauthier, Gauthier uh, in that being warmed up now. The Royals will have, I believe, the man advantage. Or no, they will be skating Probably three, three aside. aside yeah. And then uh, in two or four minutes' time, <laughs> uh, we're not quite sure. They need a bigger scoreboard. Uh, yeah, they do. <laughs> will come down, and then the Royals will go on a power play eventually. As Mark Crawford making his notations as to what kind of uh, personnel he wants out there for the power play when it does arise. And I believe now we're almost ready to get things underway again here. Once again, the Royals open the scoring. Getting his third goal of the year was Jerry Ribble. And uh, that was at about uh, just after the 10 minute mark, just halfway through this uh, first period. And then Kingston came back with three goals of their own. And that's how the first period ended, three to one Kingston. And so far here, the score remains the same. And as the Royals were pressing in Kingston territory, the fireworks developed and uh, <laughs> some ejections came about. One of those being Jeff Wilson, a key person on uh, the Kingston team, of course, their goaltender, thrown out of the hockey game, replaced by Sean Goche. We're skating three aside. And we'll see if that will be a turning point in this hockey game as Slaney moves one up to Cerrone. Cerrone was taken out there by Kavanaugh. Now, Kingston out across the line. Here's Bednarchuk. He circles. 
Bounces one off the boards. Want to scoot in and get his own rebound. He does. Good move. But Mondor steps in and takes control. Ooh. He fired one rink wide into the center ice zone for Slaney. Slaney gets there first, so no icing call. But Bedarchuk now off the boards. Head across the Cornwall line. Fires one. Ribble blocks that. Now John Slaney. Ribble trying to catch up to him. Slaney moves one in. Here's Bell right in front. Oh, oh Bell just couldn't get a stick on that. Bell is taken out. Bell, Ribble, and Slaney out there for Cornwall. Now but Narchuk across the line. Fires a shot in. That's steered aside by Daryl Paquette to Daryl Bell. Here's Bell. Skating room in across the blue line. Moves right in. Hits the brakes. Turns. Loses the puck to Lip Trot. 37 seconds in the preliminary minors. And that's called on the offside, deflected way up high. Souvenir in behind Daryl Paquette with 15.54 remaining in the second period. Three to one Kingston and 33 seconds to go in those preliminary penalties as we mentioned. Well, Darren, Pell, or Darren Bell with a, an excellent uh, scoring opportunity there just uh, mishandled the puck and couldn't get it towards the net. Three aside, uh, looks like an old fashioned game of shinny out there, doesn't it? <laughs> sure does. A lot of skating room when you get the, the scooters out there. Jeff Reed can do that, the rookie. Moves it over for Ribble. Here's a pass now oh. for Hasma, but that was called on a two-line pass. And the face-off will go inside the Cornwall line. 15-47 now remaining. Well, uh, Sean Gauthier, Gauthier, yet to be tested. I think the trick to scoring on a fresh goalie is to blast one in. Reed almost worked one free there, but was taken care of. Now here he comes across the line again, working on Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh puts him down again. Number 21 is Peter Liptron. Handling the puck nicely across the line. Looking on the far side, here's a shot by Kavanaugh, right on the rebound. Good save by Daryl Paquette on John Nelson, who had the rebound from the Kavanaugh shot. Now Rod Pasma for the Royals. Has some players out of the penalty box. He fires one down. And a whistle comes about with 15.04 remaining here. And again, the faceoff will be just inside the Royals line. And with those penalties back now, Todd, we, what are we doing? Skating four aside now? Uh, it's a uh, power play for the Kingston front now, so they'll play five, uh, men, five men to four. I think the Royals As, were just uh, short a player there. Chris Clancy. Well, that's, yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> Someone out of the box early. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> Somebody's right. anxious down there. In any case, the <laughs> Kingston front knacks are on the power play. An excellent shot by Kavanaugh on the rebound. Paquette covered very, very beautifully. Kavanaugh on the other side for Woods. He's taken out there by Knesserich. Knesserich finds the puck again, and he'll fire one the length of the ice. As on the clock, 226 remains in the penalty to Chris Clancy, who has been a, not ejected from the game, but he's in the box. Serving that time. Daryl Paquette has to steer that around the other side of the boards for Cerrone. Cerrone has a whack at it. And out over the glass that goes. And again, a whistle comes about with 14.29 to go. Kingston 3, Cornwall 1. Well, some back and forth play. Nothing spectacular. The Royals just trying to hold off the Frontenacs. Frontenacs seem to have lost a little of that momentum they had. With that, of course, they lost two players in that little skirmish. Jamie Allen, number 20, and the goaltender, Jeff Wilson. And Paquette seems to be back to the form he showed early in the first period. He's been called upon to make some good saves and has done so. Now on this side, Kavanaugh's shot is blocked. He regains control. Moves it in for number seven, Bednarchuk. Bednarchuk centering pass is knocked down by Knesserich. Knesserich backhands one out into the neutral zone. That's scooped up by Cerrone. 
across the line, has nowhere to go, so elects to dump one in and kill off some time. Knesserick making chase on that against number four, Mike Cavanaugh. But Kingston works its way free. Good on the far side. Kidnarchuk crosses the line. Knesserick takes him out, back to Woods it goes. There's a shot, didn't miss by much on the far side. Now Kingston into the corner. Major on the far side to Woods. Woods into Bednarchuk. Bednarchuk's centering pass is knocked all the way down the ice by Jason Cerrone. 106 now remains in that Chris Clancy penalty. As the front next remain on the power play, both teams making changes there. Nelson across the line, he moves it in. Now on the far side, there's Stewart's shot, and Daryl Paquette will get a glove on that, and that will bring about a whistle with 13-11 remaining here in the second period. Kingston three, Cornwall one, as sticks get high in behind the goal between Mark DeSantis and number 14, John Nelson. Well, Dave Stewart with a nice rising shot uh, from the right wing side. Paquette wise and not letting the rebound out. His number uh, 11, Tony Yob, was right there, ready to pounce. Royal still down a man. Brocklehurst and Bell out up front to kill off the remainder of this penalty. There's a shot right off the face off, deflected in front by Yob. And out over the end boards, that went one more time. Lots of souvenirs tonight. And oh. since that was deflected by a Kingston player, the face off will move outside the Cornwall zone justifiably so. So Brocklehurst, as I mentioned, Bell out there, Slaney, along with Mark DeSantis to kill off the remainder of this Kingston power play. Yob now, wrist shot, and there's another one <laughs> up into the crowd. I think they're, they're trying to hit that guy in the blue jacket. I'm not sure. He has six pucks tonight, I think. And if they do, what do you win? <laughs> you don't win nothing. The Royals doing a good job here killing this penalty. They're setting up the box and they're rushing the, the playmaker, not giving them a chance to take the shot, making them uh, move the puck around. Centering pass now. Here's Yob right in front. Morrison scores. Yob got that puck over to Morrison, and Morrison puts away his second of the night. All right, so that'll open up the gates here. Four to one now for Kingston. So the Royals, after they got the opening goal of this hockey game, are down four to one. You'll see on the replay, a bit scrambly there. Then they move it in. Yob moves one out to Morrison, and uh, Morrison had the open side and fired it home for a 4-1 Kingston lead. There's the first big test for Gauthier, who has replaced Jeff Wilson in the Kingston goal after Wilson was ejected because of the fight. Here's Yob now for Kingston. Four checked well by Cerrone. Number 21, Liptrot, has to turn in behind his net. He'll see how things develop. Moves it on the far side. His pass intercepted. Now Liptrot gets it back, moves it up again to Morrison. Morrison across the line, moves it in for McKillop. That's intercepted, though. DeSantis now on the far side, but Cerrone can't catch up to that. Cerrone works it free for DeSantis. DeSantis' centering pass hits the side of the net. Now he has it right in front. Moves it in front to Reed. Reed, though, taken out by Liptrot. And here comes Kingston. Yeah. Over on the other side, there's a shot by McKillop. Didn't miss by much. The rebound. McKillop again off the boards. Another rebound. Ribble can't clear. In to help him out is Cerrone, who moves it for DeSantis. DeSantis can't get it out much beyond his own blue line where the Royals' Jeff Reed takes control and finally the Royals clear the zone and fire it into Kingston territory. Again, Yaw. He looks rink wide. That's deflected by Slaney. Now McKillop has to circle in the neutral zone. Oh, and number 16 was belted. Gord Harris 
was belted by Mondor. Slaney's pass was deflected as things again very scrambly for both sides, although it seems that uh, Kingston has had the opportunities and have capitalized on them, whereas the Royals have not. And now, the front and back again in their own zone cannot click as they try to get out of their own end. Down the ice it goes, Ribble back there, moves it over for Slaney, that gets by him. Knesserich though off the boards. Ouch. He tried to dump one in, that was unintentionally blocked. But now Jerry Ribble backhands one in to the blue line. That's gloved and brought down and uh, Lip Trot sets out for Kingston. He fires one the length of the ice where Jerry Ribble has to circle. Ribble over skates it momentarily. Now Kingston again as play remains scrambling. Lip Trot from the point position moving in. Ribble takes him out, centering pass. Similero bangs one in behind the goal. Jerry Ribble one more time will go after that and knock it out over the line. Down the ice it goes where Mike Cavanaugh will retrieve the puck for Kingston as both teams make changes. Over here for Doucette. Doucette's pass is intercepted by Reed. Now Kingston, I believe, might be called for too many men on the ice as they were making changes. <laughs> And Larry Mevity does not like that. Well, once again, these calls are non-negotiable. <laughs> That's Boy. a great way to look at it. Gord Harris sure got a good look at the Todd Mondor Express. Boy, Mondor just decked him right on the Royal blue line. And a, ever. and a few seconds later, uh, Harris trying to get a little bit of payback and tripped up Mondor behind the ref, no call. Can't call what you don't see. The boy Mondor, uh, of course, I, I think uh, Mondor has the uh, best first name of, of anybody on the Royals. <laughs> Mike there it is. There it is oh. right there. <laughs> Good job, guys. Boy, oh boy. As Mondor, welcome back. Todd Mondor to the Cornwall Royals Hockey Club and uh, laying the body on this evening a little bit. The Royals will go to the power play. They've been unsuccessful so far twice. Frontenac's really slow in getting this line change. I think they're doing that just to irritate. Cerrone will center Knesserich Bell. Guy Levesque and Slaney back there on the point positions. As now Levesque works it on the far side for Slaney in across the line. Slaney dumps one off the glass for Bell. Bell leaves it for Cerrone back to Bell into the corner. Bell now on the other side for Knesserich. Knesserich to Bell, and that's deflected out over the glass by number two, Dave Stewart, for Kingston, and with uh, only 19 seconds gone in that power play, the face-off comes about to the right of Sean Gauthier. A very close call for the Royals uh, just before that last face-off after the penalty. It's six men on the ice, and Coach Mark Crawford noticed it just at the last second and uh, had the sixth skater uh, rush to the bench. That would be unusual. <laughs> two, two guys sitting in the box, both for too many men on the ice. Slaney across the line. Hits the brakes, finds Knesserich in the corner. He moves it to Cerrone. Cerrone couldn't find it. Now in behind for Bell to Cerrone, who's taken out by Woods. Now McKillop. Knesserich working against him. Works its way free to Cerrone. Jason Cerrone, back to Levesque, he can fire them. Mm. Deflected in front by Bell, but wide, a weak shot by Levesque there. Knesserich now, tied up, but works it free to Cerrone. In the corner, Cerrone in behind. Will he work it back to Levesque? He does. There's a shot, he fanned on it. All right, Levesque keeps it in to Bell. 39 seconds left in the Royals power play. Bell into Cerrone. Kingston doing a good job of Closing the Royals down here, no openings. Bell now trying to find that opening. Back to Cerrone. Cerrone for Bell. That's taken care of though by Giesbrecht and down the ice it goes out over the glass actually. 
and just 19 seconds remain in the Royals' power play, so the Kingston front next doing a great job of penalty killing in their own end. Doing a fine job. They've got the box set up well, and you see the men rushing, and they're trying to pinch in the corners. They know Cerrone likes to come around behind the net out to the wings and have the de defenseman uh, pinch in a bit, but they're cutting them off in the corners, and it's being, they're, they're being, being very, very effective in uh, shutting down the Royals' power play. All right, J.P. Latre out there now with Brocklehurst and Reed. Just 19 seconds remain in that bench minor to Kingston for too many men on the ice. Here's Reed right in front of Slapper. Good oh. save by Gauthier. He kicks that aside. Another chance for Pasma. Long shot just missed on the far side. Ribble hems that in at the line. Reed couldn't keep control of that. And now Liptrot sends one down the ice, and that'll do it. We're playing now again at full and even strength as Jerry Ribble for Cornwall. Leaves it for Pasma. Uh-oh, Latre couldn't control that. And Ribble, who tried to clear it along the boards, will say out over the glass it went. And another souvenir tonight. There's been lots of them. 7.23 remains here in the second period. Kingston Frontenac's four, the Cornwall Royals one. Well, I don't know who pays for the pucks, but uh, they're going through a lot of them tonight. Kingston did a marvelous job on that uh, last, uh, the last disadvantage they were at. Uh, that box they've set up well. They're uh, forcing the, the pass and not the shot. And uh, as long as you don't get a shot on net, you have no opportunity to score. You never score on a pass, always a shot. I was always taught when in doubt, shoot at the net. <laughs> Guy Levesque now, neat little move. He sends a rink-wide pass for J.A. Schneider. Schneider's first time on this evening, dumps one down into Kingston territory where Kavanaugh gives it to number 23, Doucette. Doucette can't get it further than Ooh. his line. Schneider throwing his weight around. <laughs> now Levesque moves it to Schneider in for DeSantis. He's tied up though. Here's J.A. in behind the goal he goes. Can't work it free as he's tied up by Woods. Now they work it on the other side here for Doucette. Doucette. Ooh. To Bednarchuk, who is wiped out along the boards. Now DeSantis finds a little bit of room, but is poke checked by Kavanaugh. Bednarchuk can't work it free as DeSantis on the other side for Rod Pasma. Pasma, nice pass for Guy Levesque. Takes it off the skate across the line, fakes a shot, works right in. Oh. He was down, but still got a shot away wide. Good effort, though, there by Guy Levesque, number 17 for the Cornwall Royals. Just a little over six minutes remaining in the second period. Middleton for Cornwall. Cerrone now at across the line. He'll fire one, the rebound he is gobbled up by Dave Stewart. Very solid out there for Kingston. Here's Stewart again. His pass. Lafayette was hauled down. No penalty call. And Jason Cerrone one more time. Has Knesserich with him on the right side on his off wing. Moving right in on the backhand. A centering pass to Cerrone. Jammed at the side of the net. Sean Caprice oh. moving in there as well. Number 15 is Morrison taking exception to that. <laughs> and bodies again getting a little hot. And, uh, well, the puck wasn't really covered. It was just at the side of the net, but the referee lost sight of it and blew the whistle. Right. So Morrison taking no chances <laughs> no. and just taking Caplice out of the play, basically, there. Well, Caplice was still digging, and that's what you have to do. Slaney, uh, Slaney put a good hit down here. I forget uh, who the Frontenac player was. Lafayette, I believe it was. Just sort of... Uh, Grabbed him from behind the back of the head. Something you'd see in the WWF. <laughs> Put him down on the ice. It was effective. Took his man out of the play. Well, no penalty call <laughs> as long as you don't want to go for a two out of three falls on that, though. <laughs> Here's a Ooh. shot. Oh, good save by Daryl Paquette off of Tony Yob. It was a deflected shot and had to get the skate out quickly on that. The police now rink wide for Knesset Rick across the line. Cerrone now. Can't get further than the faceoff circle. He's tied up, and Kingston starts right back out. Off the boards it goes. 
Morrison moves it in. He can't click with his teammate, Yob. Now Slaney. He went end to end a week ago. He tries it again tonight, but he's stood up at the blue line by Liptrot. Now here's Liptrot for Kingston. His pass is intercepted and the Royals fire one back down into Kingston territory. 427 now remains in the second period. The front neck hanging on to that three goal lead. Pasma for Reed. Reed across the line. Now Mark Major. Mark Major of the Kingston front necks wearing number 88. Up here for number eight, Giesbrecht. Giesbrecht for Schneider. Schneider hit by Reed, moves it up on the boards though. Now on this side for Major, his shot. That's wide. It bounces out in front. The Royals can't clear, shot Ooh. right on. And Daryl Paquette making another good save for Cornwall as Bell on his wrong wing trying to get out there. He's uh, stood up a little bit and hooked a little, but Still maneuvers the puck down into Kingston territory. The front necks, however, move it right back out to the neutral zone where Todd Mondor slides one over for Slaney. Slaney for Bell, too far for him. Down the ice it goes. Royals want to make wholesale changes again. Kavanaugh for Major on the other side now for McKillop in across the line. McKillop, he's nailed by Schneider. Kingston right out in front. Center oh. across right through the crease by Similero. <laughs> Slaney to DeSantis. Now Clancy for Cornwall. Smacks one into Kingston territory. Gauthier stops that. Here's Gord Harris. He's nailed oh. at the line by J.A. Schneider, who is oh, making boy. his presence known this evening. But will receive a Elbowing call on that play with 2.44 remaining here in the second period. J.A. Schneider will go to the penalty box. <laughs> well, you remember Gord Harris uh, a few minutes ago getting nailed by Todd Mondor. Uh, he just meets J.A. Schneider here. Schneider gives him an elbow and drives him into the glass. Schneider paying the ultimate price for an elbow. Two minutes. Lots of end-to-end uh, -end action with uh, no whistles and no pucks over the glass. <laughs> but there hasn't been the crisp passing plays that uh, we've been uh, experiencing in the last five or six weeks here, Todd, uh, from, from, from the visiting team as well as the home club. Oh. Uh, between the blue lines, there's been a lot of play, and then uh, when they can get a break inside the zone, they, they, they do. They work it free, and they try and get the break. Well, both teams uh, missing some key players, and that uh, could be very well a reason why there's a lot of crispness out of the game. Kavanaugh now on the backhand in behind the goal. But Narchuk in the corner. He controls back here for Liptrot. He'll fire one right on the rebound. Oh, oh, just wide as John Nelson tried to steer that in on the backhand but couldn't. Jeff Reed now for Cornwall on the penalty killing roll. What a good job he's done all year. Fires one in. Killing off some seconds there. Number 23 is Wayne Doucette. Out across the line. On this side for Bednarchuk. Bednarchuk hits the brakes as he crosses the line. Back in for Doucette. That eludes him, but back now on the far side. Liptrot has it at the point, but that hops out over his stick. He has to work it on, the, on this side for Woods. Woods back for Liptrot. Liptrot elects to fire one in. Doucette making chase. Doucette. Tips it into the corner, but Narchuk picks that up. Back for Doucette. Kingston can't control, out over the line. 35 seconds remains in that penalty to number 15, John Allen Schneider. As the Royals, Rod Pasma fires one the length of the ice, and that'll kill off some more seconds on that clock as uh, just 19 seconds remain now. On that rush, with just one minute remaining in the period, the Kingston team could not click. There's Cerrone with a wrist shot. Gauthier steers that up high on the glass. McKillop now, coming out of his Ooh. own zone, is nailed by Bell. 
Woods tried to control, but is taken care of by Cerrone. Here's McKillop again. J.A. Schneider hits him as he comes out of the penalty box. And number 27, Jeff Schneider for Kingston sends one the length of the ice as just the half minute remains here in the second period. Mark DeSantis chases that. His quick pass to Slaney is deflected to Brocklehurst. They're gonna cross the line. Brocklehurst lost the puck at the blue line. Giesbrecht now turns in his own zone and he'll just lob one in into the neutral zone. DeSantis tried to work it free, could not. Reed intercepts the pass. And two seconds, one second. And that'll do it here for the second period. Just one goal scored. It was a Kingston goal and it moved them ahead. 4 1. In this hockey game, it is a 4 to 1 hockey game. Kingston leading. And we'll be back with the second period scoring summary as well as third period action in just a moment. Rogers Cable 11, your community channel, is proud to bring you the matchup of the year. The best players from the OHL go head-to-head -head with the best of the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League in what's sure to be a great evening of all-star hockey. It's the Challenge Cup, and it'll be brought to you by the Parks and Recreation Department for the City of Cornwall and by Rogers Cable 11. Cable 11 will be broadcasting live from the Civic Complex starting at 7.30 p.m. Tuesday night, January the 30th. And don't worry if you miss it live. You can catch it the following night at 6 p.m. or Monday night, February the 5th at 7 p.m. or Thursday night, February 8th at 8 p.m. So watch your community channel, Cable 11, and follow the Challenge Cup live Tuesday night or catch the replays all brought to you by the City of Cornwall Parks and Recreation Department and Rogers Cable 11. Welcome back to the Cornwall Civic Complex where the Kingston Frontenac this evening are enjoying a three goal lead. The score here, Kingston four, the Cornwall Royals won. And Todd, not a lot of uh, scoring <laughs> in the second period, but that one goal uh, opened up a three goal lead for the Frontenac. Well, one goal, uh, Justin Morrison getting his second of the game at 7.05 in the second period. And uh, that goal coming on a beautiful uh, pass from the left side of Daryl Paquette by Tony Yob and uh, Justin Morrison right there to connect on the pass and pop it in on the low blocker side. Second of the night in 7.05. All right, Sean Gauthier has replaced Jeff Wilson, who was the <laughs> original starting goaltender for Kingston in this game. Sean Gauthier has not been scored upon so far since taking over from Jeff Wilson, so that's the way the scoring goes so far. Kingston four and the Cornwall Royals one. Elsewhere in the OHL this evening, Niagara Falls is at Hamilton to take on the Dukes, who are winless so far in 1990. Peterborough hosting Ottawa, and London is at Windsor to take on those Spitfire. Mike Jackson not playing this evening for the Cornwall Royals. Uh, he is suspended uh, indefinitely. And also, of course, Owen Nolan not in uniform for the Cornwall Royals, along with uh, Tom Nemeth and Paul Kane. Both those players are injured and not playing this evening for the Kingston Frontenac. Uh, Todd, can you update me on that? Uh, uh, Brock, Shiak. Brock Shiak, I believe he's uh, serving a suspension, a six game suspension for an incident he had uh, in a, in a game, uh, no penalty called, but apparently uh, the tape was reviewed and sort of the same instance as uh, Michael Jackson, uh, just uh, the league decided to give him a six game suspension. I'm not uh, not sure of the incident there. Okay, I was about to say the similar incident to uh, Jackson last week. Shyak is out for Kingston on a six game suspension. So the Royals have their work cut out for them as we're now underway in the third period. Sean Caplice in across the line, working in a center oh. cross. Oh, I believe Jason Cerrone whacked yes. that in on the back end on the center and pass from Caprice. And as I just finished mentioning, the Royals had their work cut out for them here in the third period. They've cut the lead to two goals, four to two on that goal by Jason Cerrone. Well, Caprice booted it down that left wing, got the pass over after Gauthier was uh, beaten, and Cerrone pops her in. He had the whole net just yawning at him.
All right, Ribble as well, picking up an assist on that goal for Cornwall. So let's see if that will put some spark into the Royals as they are just down two. And that is the first goal that Cornwall has scored since around the 10 minute mark of the first period. So it's been a while and uh, they hope that they can, that goal will spark them. However, this pass intercepted by McKillop. He steps in across the line, but that is called on the offside. Well, Jason Cerrone, uh, Owen Nolan and John Slaney will all be appearing in the OHL QMJHL Challenge Cup. And that, of course, will be brought to you by the Parks and Recreation Department of the City of Cornwall and Rogers Cable 11. Tuesday, January 30th, 7.30, live from the Cornwall Civic Complex. If you can't catch it live, watch it on tape repeat. Wednesday, the 31st at 6 p.m., Monday, February 5th at 7, and Thursday, February 8th at 8 p.m. That's the Challenge Cup on Cable 11, brought to you by the City of Cornwall's Parks and Recreation Department. All right, look forward to doing that game as Jeff Reed scoots in across the center ice line, dumps one in. Knesserek making chase for Cornwall. Major now dumps one in for Brock. The Royals, four checking better than they have so far in this entire hockey game at the outset of this third period. McKillop, Slaney takes care of him. And now Jeff Reed turns for Cornwall, moves one up for Bell. Bell to Knesserek has Reed on the other side, doesn't see him, however and lets the slap shot go <laughs> way up high, and there's that same fan, Todd. <laughs> well, a beautiful glove save on the right-hand side by that one fan in the blue denim jacket. Uh, <laughs> just a blistering shot, a little high above the net. Nobody touched it, and uh, another souvenir. He's looking for some commercial work on the <laughs> side, perhaps. <laughs> well, another inch uh, over to the right, and he might have caught that one between the eyes. That was a hard shot. He's feeling a stinging sensation in his fingers there. <laughs> Schneider now rolls it around the boards on the other side. The Royals intercept. Here's a shot. That's blocked. Out over the line. DeSantis now bangs it back in. And Kingston will have to set out one more time. 18-26 remains in the third period. Kingston four, the Royals two. Kavanaugh. On this side for Lafayette. Lafayette dumps it into Cornwall territory. DeSantis back there. Gains control. Can't get it out, however. As Middleton on the right wing was stopped. Now Guy Levesque to Slaney. Slaney's pass for Clancy in behind him and out over the line it goes as Middleton on his off wing for checking. Levesque trying to keep that in at the line but it's called by Monroe, your linesman, or one of two this evening on the offside. Well, Sean Gauthier finally giving one up to the Royals, and the Royals seem to be playing with a little more momentum since that goal. They have to keep pressing uh, the Kingston front knacks. Kingston, of course, uh, trying to once again claim first place in the Leighton division. And the Royals always trying to open more ground between them and Hamilton. Okay, off the faceoff now, Stewart sends one into the Cornwall zone. Ribble there to take out the player. Now the puck works free to Brocklehurst. Caplice couldn't find any room. Across the line, Kingston comes. A centering pass is intercepted by Brocklehurst, who was nailed by Dave Stewart. But in behind that play, the net again came off its moorings. As now Pasma and number 10, Joel Washkurak uh, getting sticks up a little bit, exchanging vocals. Well, I didn't see what caused that, but uh, they were jousting a bit. The net off the moorings. Nothing really becomes of it. No penalties. Brocklehurst was decked down above the uh, faceoff circle. The faceoff's going to come outside the Royal Zone. All right, to get back to the All-Star game, Jason Cerrone, of course, uh, will complete the threesome uh, of players that will go to the All-Star game along with Owen Nolan and John Slaney. And, uh, of course, uh, Mark Crawford uh, assisting Coach Todd for the OHL All-Star game against the QMJHL. Well, Dick Todd, of course... Uh of the Peterborough Peets, an assistant coach with the World Junior Championship team. Here we go. Pasma and uh, Washkirk. Those are the two. Oh, they're duking it. Oh, there we go. 
And those were the two that <laughs> had their sticks up just prior to this exchange. So Boy, finally, they... when play got started again, they went back right at it. <laughs> well, they really got the fist going. I'd have to say that was a draw, although uh, Washkarak uh, had the early advantage. But Pazma showing the Stanima comes back to tie it up. We'd have to call that a draw. Of course, uh, no worries for Mike Tyson and these two uh, ever <laughs> threatening to know. So a couple of coincidental minors. All right, getting back to the All-Star game because it's coming closer all the time. Sure We're is. just uh, next Tuesday now and uh, only about 900 seats available for that All-Star game. And uh, Bob Kilger, of course, MPP, will be named honorary captain for the OHL squad, the QMJHL. They're not sure of their honorary captain yet, but it could be <laughs> Pierre Duguay, who was an ex-Cornwall Royal who played with the Royals in the 69-70 season and part of the 70-71 season. Traded to the Quebec uh, Ramparts after that, but uh, he just might very well be Pierre Duguay, the honorary captain of the uh, QMJHL that evening. So a lot of Cornwall names being thrown about. And I believe Cerrone, if I'm not mistaken, will be playing on a line with Mike Ricci. Yes, and, he will uh, be. They're probably going to put Cerrone, Ricci, and Nolan together. Cerrone on the left side. They'll leave Ricci at center, and Nolan will fill in on the right side. So that should be a pretty high scoring and high punch uh, line. Of course, there uh, won't be too much hitting, I don't think, in this game. As we know, Owen Nolan can do come out. Now Bednarchuk across the line. A shot oh. to hit the goal post. Bednarchuk scooted in on the right side, hit the goal post. <laughs> as now Bednarchuk finds himself with the puck again, fired one up high. Paquette deflects that into the glass, right out in front. But Narchuk one more time has a shot at it. Not good wood though. Again, coming out of the corner is knocked down by Cerrone. Now Cerrone finds himself with the puck. Brocklehurst slaps one off the boards out to the neutral zone. And Stewart fires one in off the glass as the Kingston Frontenacs making changes here. And the Royals send one the length of the ice as they want to make changes too. That will be an icing call against the Cornwall Royals, much to the displeasure of the 16, <laughs> 1,700 fans here or so. Four minutes gone by in the third period. Kingston four, Royals two. Well, Mike Bodner, Chuck, playing an outstanding shift there last shift. He had two or three good scoring opportunities. Hit the goal post. Uh, we heard the ding all the way up here in the broadcast booth. Just uh, got back again, hustled in the corner, got back out in front. Bang, another shot by the net. Uh, Paquette lost his stick. So... Mike Bodnerchuk really playing a, an outstanding shift there. And Daryl Paquette playing kind of coolly. He's hanging his right in there. He is. Doing a fine job. Brock off the face off his shot. Again, Paquette had to be careful to steer that aside for Jeff Reed on this side to Knesserick and across the line. Oh. Knesserick. Right in there, hauled down by Woods. I believe a penalty coming up here to <laughs> Kingston for hooking, and justifiably so, as number five, Brock Woods, had the hook on Knesserick as he made the move and got by him, and uh, all that was left to do for Brock Woods was put the stick to uh, Knesserick. Well, Knesserick put the little deke on uh, Brock Woods and caught him going the other way, and all Woods could do was hang on for all glory and drag them down. And Still uh, with Woods on his back, Knesserek with a good scoring opportunity and uh, almost almost put it in the net. He's a big, strong guy. He'll remain out there on this Royals power play. They're 0 for 3 so far tonight. Joining him will be Jason Cerrone at center, Darren Bell on the right wing, Mondor and Slaney on the defensive positions for Cornwall. Bit of a scrum effect now off the face-off circle. Finally, Slaney finds himself with the puck along the line. He moves to the other side to Mondor. Mondor loses it to Bobby McKillop. McKillop now moves it out to Ooh. Giesbrecht. The shot right on. Paquette making the save there. Had to be cautious with that as John Slaney turns in behind his own goal. 
Dumps Laney out across the line, looking rink wide, can't find anyone, he dumps it in. Now here's a chance for McKillop, just too far for him. And Slaney has to get back there and scoots out with it one more time. 116 remaining in the Royals power play. Across the line, Knesserich. Knesserich, that pass is intercepted. Now to Slaney, he works it. Neat pass on the other side to DeSantis, to the Knesserich in front. Another whack at it. Ooh. And that's blocked as Bell was knocked down and the Kingston team finally sent it down the ice. Here come the Royals to Cerrone. Reed with him. Cerrone loses control. Dumps it in behind the Kingston net. They fire it off the boards and down the ice. 42 seconds now to go in that minor penalty to number five, Brock Woods. Mark DeSantis being harassed there. Now Slaney controls for the Royals. Across the center ice line into Kingston territory. Good move by Slaney, working his way right in. He scores! John Slaney! <laughs> A lovely play. Lovely is right. You saw a week ago John Slaney go end to end and fire a wrist shot up high. And then get the winning goal eventually, which turned out to be the winning goal shortly after that. You just saw another great play by John Slaney. Look at him maneuver here, Tom. Well, he splits the defense, then cuts back in and puts her up on the top shelf where they keep the peanut butter. Remnants <laughs> of Al Iafredi. All right, Boy. so <laughs> the Royals were down three coming into this third period. Now they've cut the lead to just one, 4-3. Kingston still remains in the lead. What a goal by John Slaney. Lots of uh, time to play in this hockey game, 14:09. Here's your announcement. Mark DeSantis gathering in another assist on that goal by John Slaney. Four to three hockey game. Kingston still in front, but the Royals looking better in this period than they have in the previous two. Well, the momentum's shifted. Guy Levesque across the line. He's stood up there by Woods. Levesque takes Woods uh, heavily into the boards, comes out of the corner with the puck. The shot is blocked. The rebound sits there, but now Kingston clears it to the boards. Number 15. Justin Morrison in behind the net, moves it on this side to Lafayette. Lafayette, good for checking again by Levesque. Out he comes with it one more time. Out in front, Caprice just couldn't get good wood on that. Kingston down the other way. That's Yob going <laughs> end to end along the left side of the boards. And he didn't uh, cause any damage there, and a whistle comes about with 13-18 remaining here in the third period. Well, a couple of more good uh, scoring opportunities for the Royal. The Royals are right back in this game now. They're only down one goal, 13 minutes and 18 seconds left to play. And they're right back in it. Things, All right. things now starting to switch and going the way for the Royals, but the Frontenac still getting some good opportunities themselves, as we've just seen Yob go from end to end. And uh, just if it wasn't for a sliding defenseman, would have a good shot on net. And Daryl Paquette, again, uh, playing a solid game this evening. If he can continue to do so, and the Royals can get on the scoreboard a couple more times, it could be interesting as Reed scoots across the line, fires oh. one up high. Oh. Gauthier lost that <laughs> momentarily, but made a great save on that high, hard shot by Jeff Reed. But again, as you see, the momentum has definitely swung in the Royals' direction. Reed gathering in a pass from J.A. Schneider, firing one up high. Gauthier making the save, losing control or losing sight of the rebound, but the Royals couldn't pounce on that opportunity. Well, the shot was high and uh, hit him up top, and when he let the rebound out, he ended up being facing the net. The rebound was right there, and lucky there was a defenseman as Reed was still coming in on that right wing. Cerrone, Schneider, and Reed up front for Cornwall, Slaney and Mondor. Here's a chance for Schneider. Oh. He scores! <laughs> Holy cow, J.A. <laughs> Schneider back has one in from right in front, and this is a tie hockey game for all. Well, uh, as you said earlier, when in doubt, just shoot it at the net, and that's what he did. And it goes by right through in the five hole on Sean Goche. J.A. Schneider. Well, you look at a guy like J.A. Schneider who didn't play in the first period, as now we see the replay coming up.
Cerrone winning the faceoff, moving it in. Schneider, the puck works itself free to him, and on the backhand, has a good whack at it, but he didn't play Todd in the first period. Comes nope. out in the second period, throwing his weight all over the place, remember? <laughs> Took the elbow in penalty. Took the elbow, yep. and it did cost a goal, because uh, Kingston did score on that uh, man power advantage, but comes back here big, and for a guy who's played mostly defense the last four weeks, up front there with Cerrone and Reed, a new combination by Mark Crawford, and uh, we're tied here. Again, the Royals pressing. Reed in there. Right behind, circles went out in front. Cerrone had a whack at it and just fanned. That was John Slaney, rather, who moved in from his point position and just fanned Ooh. on the play. In front of the Royals bench now, the puck finally works its way free. John Slaney has to go all the way back and fires one up high over the glass and out <laughs> of the ice area. And 12-24 remains, we're tied at four. Boy, what a game, what a game. It started out here with the Royals going up at uh, one nothing, and then bingo, the Kingston Frontenacs come back with three goals in two minutes and eight seconds. First period ends at 3-1. Kingston gets the only goal of the second period. Now the Royals come back with three straight just outstanding game and lots of hard hitting, a couple of fights and lots of goals. And that's what you want in a hockey game. All right, Brocklehurst now out there centering Knesserich on the left side. Bell is on the right side off Ooh. the face off. There's a shot by Major and that didn't miss my much. Now Knesserich trying to work it free. The Royals Knesserich again. Lofts one down into Kingston territory, Bell Four checking, Knesserich following up on the play, working right in front, has a whack at it, but checked by number 27.
it in. Neserek back there, can't get any penetration. Cerrone forechecking well. Scott Thornton in there too. Cerrone trying to work it free against Scott Thornton, cannot. And a whistle comes about with only 24 seconds gone in this hockey game. He did that one week ago, the first star in the hockey game. When the Cornwall Royals defeated the Oshawa Generals, Knesserich had a pair. Off the face off, it goes to Jeff Fife. Now the Bulls work it up. That's Pearson across ice. To Thornton, he tried to find Berg at the blue line. That got by him. Ribble tries to clear for Cornwall and does. Cerrone can't catch up with that, though. As Thornton bangs one off the boards and down. Pearson making chase. This is Belleville's top line. Berg, Thornton, and Pearson out there against the Cornwall Royals' top line. Nolan, Cerrone, and Knesserich. And a whistle comes about with 19.09 to go in the first period. And that will bring about a face-off to the right of Daryl Paquette, who is starting in goal this evening for the Cornwall Royals. And Daryl Paquette has uh, Sean in his last couple of appearances. Jeff Fife will be in goal. 3.11 goals against average for Jeff Fife. And he leads the league in that category. Your referees this evening, Daryl Borton is the referee. Chrissy Mart and Bruce Cherry are on the lines. Both teams have made changes. Jackson is out there with Kane. And number nine, Bell. DeSantis now tries to clear to Jackson. Jackson fires one on the far side for Darren Bell. Too far for him. Now Paul Kane. He finds Bell at the center ice area. That hops over his stick. Bancroft moves it in, but now the Royals come out again. Jackson. He leaves it there for Kane. Kane centering pass right in front. It goes. The Fife just steered that aside, but. A good opportunity there for number nine, Darren Bell, right off the bat. Bell throwing his weight around as well. He might get a penalty call here, too, for elbowing. He got the elbow high on the far side, and I believe that's what the referee is calling. So. so the Bulls will get their first crack at a power play opportunity. And what a good power play it is when you can send out quality hockey players like Petrola, who of course an ex-Cornwall Royal and led the Belleville Bulls in scoring last year with his 85 points. You put Pearson on the left wing, Thornton at center. Berg holds down one point position. And on the other side, I can't tell from this vantage point right now, as they work it free, Petrola does. He moves it into the corner. That's broken up by Ribble. Ribble tries to clear, but not out. Berg hems that in. Petrola to Berg. Berg back to Petrola. He has to pick it up off the boards. Reed, four checking on Petrola. Now it goes back to Bob Berg. Into Rick Petrola. He tried to pass. Now it works to Thornton. Thornton centering pass is eaten up by Jeff Reed. He backhands a lazy puck down the ice. And 120 remains in the penalty to newcomer Darren Bell, acquired from the Sudbury Wolves just yesterday. Not even 24 hours ago. Now the Bulls, number 21, Scott Boston. He fires one in. DeSantis rips one off the glass. And over the glass it goes. 104 remains in the penalty to Bell. 17-32 in this, the first period. So they can fill the net. They have four or five guys between Robotham and uh, Thornton, Berg, Pearson. These guys uh, know where the net is. Robotham, number 17, is out there right now, centering him. 
is number eight, John Porco, who Jill mentioned just a short while ago. There he is with it in the corner. Into the corner to Robotham. Back here to number two is Bancroft on the far side. That popped over Robotham's stick, luckily for the Royals, as Nolan breaks out. He feeds Cerrone, dancing right in. The shot, he scores! He's only the best hockey player on the hockey team. And uh, since his return, he has definitely proven that point. So the Royals grab an early 1-0 lead. 1645 to go in the first period. The Royals still shorthanded here. That's Bob Burke circling. He tries to center a pass. Ribble got a stick on it, but it came out in front anyway. Now Berg with the rebound. Circling, moves it back to the point where Greg Bignall Fires it into the corner to Gretzky. Gretzky, Thornton had a stick lifted. And with Bell out of the penalty box, he lifted a stick. Now Paul Kane in across the line. A backhand pass to Bell. He circles in behind the net. Bell centers one. He scores! <laughs> Paul Kane got his stick on the pass from newcomer Darren Bell. And the Cornwall Royals jump ahead 2-0 early in this hockey game. Well, certainly, Wayne, you can see that that play made possible by Bell coming out of the penalty box, Wayne, and stripping the, uh, lifting up the uh, defenseman's stick, and the play just uh, proceeded down the ice, and just a beautiful play by all, Wayne. Bell got out of the box and went to his own zone, lifted the stick of uh, the defenseman for Belleville, and uh, next thing you know, the Royals got out of their end and uh, had a had that opportunity and they capitalized. So early in this hockey game, the Royals looked fired up one more time as they did last week and are leading to nothing. 1990 so far has been fairly decent for the Cornwall Royals. They've won two out of three hockey games. There's a shot by Jolly on the far side, kicked out by Jeff Fife. Rocklehurst out there for the first time. He takes the puck away from Grimes. Now Belleville trying to get something going. They cannot. That's number 20, Marcus Middleton. He's tripped up. Fans wanted a penalty there, but to no avail, they do not get one. Number 26, that's Devono. Now they work it back in. The Royals do, or try to, but Belleville's Porco comes out. He leaves it for Grimes. Grimes across the line. Dump it there for Pearson. And it looked like maybe the Bulls had uh, one or two extra players out there, but we'll just have to wait and see. Well, they are certainly calling a penalty here, Wayne, and there probably will, will be too many men on the ice, I would think. It might be, because a couple of guys were standing around, but the person who came off the bench, it was Pearson, uh, Jill, and, and the puck hit his skate. He ended up with the puck, so they just might get called for that. Two minutes are up on the board on the visitor's side, so the Cornwall Royals will get their first opportunity on the power play. Of course, the Belleville Bulls' first opportunity on the power play was a failure as the Cornwall Royals got a shorthanded goal. Exactly the call, Wayne. Too many men on the ice. And Wayne, now you mentioned uh, many times during our broadcast this season that Belleville, uh, who started off slow and has been just steaming forward, uh, is going to be in first place at the end of this year, and they are playing well. That was my prediction. They, right now, are tied with the Ottawa 67s in second place as Pearson works his way in. Of course, the very strong of late Kingston Frontenac are in first place, six points ahead of both Ottawa and Belleville. However, Belleville beat Kingston just last night, 5-3, so. John Slaney on the power play for the Cornwall Royals, circling in his own zone. To work with, he has Rob Knesserich, Jason Cerrone, Paul Kane, and Owen Nolan. The 
pass misses Knesserick on the far side. Fife dumps it over the glass, and a whistle comes about there with 122 left in the penalty. 14.30 remains in the first period. 2-0 Royals. Wayne, even though Belleville is down here 2-0 early in the game, they certainly have uh, one of the better balanced teams in, in the league. They seem to, uh, all their lines, lines seem to match off well with no matter who their opposition may be. A lot of talent on the hockey club, 13 veterans. Exactly. Very hard to beat a club with that many veterans, Wayne. Off the face-off, Belleville controls. Off the boards, number 20, Bob Berg. Dumped it to the Royals line where John Slaney now. On the far side to Paul Kane. Kane dumps it in behind the bull net. Slaney keeps that in at the line. Cerrone has a little bit of working room. He fires one on the other side to Kane. Kane here to John Slaney. Slaney tried to fire one to Cerrone, but that was behind him. Now back to the point, it goes to Kane. There's a shot blocked in front by number five, Bignell. Nolan in behind the net. Fires it to Slaney. Slaney directs it toward the net. Cerrone got his stick on it, but a good save by Jeff Fife. Now Knesserich, back to Kane. Kane will hit it on the fly. Tipped in front again by Cerrone. Wide. Slaney now at the point into Nolan. That's uh, hopped over his stick. Knesserick, though, doing some good forechecking. Three Royals all together. Let's hope they come out with it. They do. Cerrone circles right in front. Great save by Jeff Fife to get his skate on Jason Cerrone, who came out from behind the Belleville Bull goal. Only 10 seconds now in the power play for the Royals. Across the line, Slaney hits Nolan. Jackson can't keep that in. Now Ribble into Jackson. Jackson's tied up by Bignall. Again, hemmed in at the line. Good job by Ribble. Here's Jerry Ribble, wrist shot, way up high. Power play now has expired as both teams are playing at full and even strength. There's a weak shot by John Slaney, way wide. Here's Darren Bell into Jackson. Jackson can't control. Sean Caplice throwing his weight around. So does Darren Bell, making his presence known early on this hockey club. Berg across the line. Jackson takes him out of the play. And Darren Bell sets sail for the Cornwall Royals. He fires it into their zone. Big Rod Pasma has nowhere to go, so he fires it right back. 12-22 remains here in the first period. The Cornwall Royals, two. The Belleville Bulls, no score. Wayne Thompson here, along with Jill Gibo in the broadcast booth bringing you the Rogers Cable 11 game of the week. Jeff Reed in there as Jolly lays a body out. There's a centering pass now. Jolly circles behind the net. Back here to Pasma. He lets one go. Didn't miss by much. Clancy lost sight of that or he might have wanted to get his stick on it. Here's Clancy now. Clancy to Jolly. Clancy following up on the play as Gretzky takes control for the Belleville Bulls. Gretzky finding some skating room out across the center ice area. He's hauled down by Jolly. A penalty coming up here to Ron Jolly. I'm sure it will be of a hooking nature. Well, Wayne, I think it was more of a Gretzky's brother nature, I think, because he wasn't going to call that until a few seconds after he was dumped there. Not one of the better penalties he could call, but penalty ne nevertheless, I guess. Right, so the Royals didn't capitalize on that power play. And the Belleville Bulls now will send their power play out there as Jolly goes to the box. Scott Thornton, Rick Petrola. Pearson on the left side. Bob Berg, of course, out there. And number 21 is Scott Boston. Being replaced now by Sean O'Reilly, who had the plus 21 and who was... Now they decide to switch them back again, so... Sean O'Reilly, number four, got the award for the plus 21. Transamerica Life Award, but Scott Boston is out there on the power play. So Belleville Bulls trying to get back into this game with a, a quick one. Not that they're out of it by any means, folks. It's early in this hockey game, and this team can score goals. Boston with the puck on the far side. Rifles one in. Has a funny bounce off the boards out of the corner. Mark DeSantis controls, though, and dumps it out over the line where Belleville has to go back into their own zone. Bob Berg with control on the other side to Boston. 
Boston to Thornton. Scott Thornton, Mark DeSantis stands him up at the center ice area. Now Pearson has a chance. Pearson, who started slowly this OHL campaign, but has caught fire, and he's scoring goals at a very rapid pace. Now Bird has it at the point, but Paul Kane got his stick on that, and out over the line it goes. Pearson with the puck at the center ice area, has to circle. Slaney poke checks that away. Paul Kane has the puck, but that's called by linesman Emard on a delayed offside with 10 minutes and 34 seconds left here in the first period. 53 seconds left in the penalty to Ron Jolly. Royals this evening, Blackman not in uniform. Of course, Gord Pell and Darcy Cahill, as we mentioned at the outset of the broadcast, are traded. Guy Levesque sitting this one out tonight. Todd Mondor still has the bad knee. And Tom Nemeth, I guess in a numbers game, is not sitting this one, or, or is sitting this one out, rather. Jason Skellett, Stuart Tufts, and Scott Feesby not in uniform tonight for the Belleville Bulls. So the Bulls controlling. They work it into the corner. Gretzky banks it off the board. Cerrone's there, though. Cerrone to Nolan. This combination is dangerous, whether there's uh, whether they're playing at full strength or penalty killing. And just 15 seconds remains in the Jolly penalty now. As the Bulls, this will be their last opportunity on this power play. The center right, there's a shot. That's way wide. That'll carry them right off the boards and back to the point. Now the penalty has expired. Jolly back on the ice. Cerrone trying to break away there, but could not. And the Belleville Bulls bring it in. Offside call. So the Royals, uh, again, having great success so far in a penalty killing role. They actually got a shorthanded goal in the first chance. Joe and killed that one successfully. Well, Wayne, uh, last Thursday night in a broadcast, the Royals uh, had no trouble killing off all the penalties, and that was a penalty filled game on both sides. And they were very successful. And uh, if, uh, if that was any indication of the, the type of hockey that they're going to play from now to the end of the season, uh, we can see we're seeing it here again tonight so far. Very effective, Wayne. Especially in the second period last week against Oshawa, the Royals had four or five times where they had to kill at least a full two-minute terms, and they did so successfully. Right out in front, there's a shot. Daryl Paquette making the save now as Brocklehurst out across the line. On the other side to Bell, back to Brocklehurst, a wrist shot, good save. Knesserek on the doorstep, awaiting a rebound. But Jeff Fife, who is so good at covering up on shots, does not let a lot of rebounds go. And that's probably the success of his 3.11 league leading goals against average. Of course, as you mentioned earlier in the broadcast, Paquette uh, uh, playing some sensational uh, goaltending the past few games. He really has. And he gets a start again tonight. So yep. He's getting the nod, and Coach Mark Crawford showing some. Uh, some good confidence in Daryl Paquette, and justifiably so. What were we saying with Fife prior to the broadcast? Uh, he's won how many games? Is it 20 or 22? Uh, 20, 20 games, win. I believe he's, uh, Jeff Fife has got uh, 20 wins, nine losses, and a tie, win. Tops in the league. All right. Knesserick now out of the corner. He works it out to Brocklehurst across the center ice line. He has Bell on the other side, but elects to drop it for Knesserick. There's a, a weak shot. Brocklehurst doing the forechecking into the corner. He's nailed by Bignall. Darren Bell in there as well as number 16, Grimes, and they'll get a whistle. As 8 minutes 33 seconds remains here in the first period, the Royals ahead by 2. The score is 2-0. start of the broadcast at the start of the season uh, the faces certainly have changed since then we've gotten uh, quite a number of new additions and we've seen the offense get better the defense get better and certainly the goaltending is really starting to come around now it really has and I was mentioning last week the defense is uh, defense is a good size now and uh, with the acquisition of Middleton it's even bigger John Slaney rifles went in on the far boards. Fife in behind to stop that. He leaves it for Steve Bancroft. 
Bancroft can't find anyone, so dumps it out to the center ice area where DeSantis tried to find J.P. Latre, could not. Latre out of there on the left side with Nolan and Cerrone now. Owen Nolan circling, gives it to J.P. Latre. Tried to find Cerrone. Cerrone was checked there by Boston as Bancroft works it up to Scott Thornton. Thornton dumps it in. Making chase there is Berg on the left side. DeSantis ties him up. Nolan in there to retrieve the puck for Cornwall, though Thornton works it free. Pearson trying to work his way in, cannot. Boston, a weak backhander in behind the goal. Pearson in the corner. Into the other corner to Thornton as they work in behind the goals. There will be a penalty here to Mark DeSantis. At the 12.37 mark here of the first period, Mark DeSantis, so the Belleville Bulls, again, Jill, will get another chance to go to that power play. Well, certainly, uh, we were just talking about how the Royals have to kill off these penalties, and uh, uh, sooner or later, uh, one of them is bound to go in, and let's hope that this is not the time, Wayne, and uh, they've got their big guns out there now. They look to number eight as a leader in offense, Wayne. He's, he's, got, he's the playmaker. He's the guy with the magic out there. Porco is out there with Ken Robotham. Those two know where to go. Killing the penalty for the Royals is Reed Cerrone. Ribble and Rod Pasma. In behind it goes to Porco. He leaves it for Robotham. Back here to O'Reilly. O'Reilly to Robotham. Into the corner to Porco. Centering pass. That just missed on the short side as Cerrone sends one all the way down. Reed and Jolly out there now killing that penalty as that was a quick change for Cornwall. The Royals fired all the way down. Jerry Ribble does. Belleville having a hard time to get anything organized again on this power play. Here comes Bicknell wearing the C tonight across the line, leaving it for Porco. Porco in behind for Robotham. He's taken out by Big Pasma. King comes up with it, but then is checked by O'Reilly, but Pasma works it free to Mike Jackson. Jackson scooting in on the left side, hits the brakes. He will elect to kill some time. Works it back to John Slaney. Slaney finds an opening. Just over the line it comes as Porco failed to keep it in. Mike Jackson now will dump it all the way down and just 39 seconds remain in the penalty to Mark DeSantis. That'll be an offside call as the Bulls try to penetrate the Royals line, but again, as uh, we were mentioning last week, Jill, uh, the Royals doing a great job standing up defensively at their own line, and uh, it pays off in the long run. Well, Wayne, I think they've been practicing uh, most, uh, mostly on their defense because of the problems that they had early in the season, and we can certainly see it. The past five, six games, uh, usually when the other team scores on the power play, there's a scramble in front of the net, and they've got a clear shot, as they did have a little earlier, but, but missed the net. And, but as you mentioned there now, they're certainly not getting through this defensive line at all. And Jeff Reed, one of the big reasons out there killing off these penalties as well. Yes, sir. Three quarters of the penalty has been killed off, and we will hope that the other quarter will as well. As Petrola tried to work it in to Berg, he does. Now Pasma bounces one off the glass, and out it goes, so Scott Boston has to circle for Belleville. He finds Berg on this side, but Thornton was in ahead of the play, and that'll be once again called on the offside.